Padre, Padre, que nos dé fuerza para seguir adelante en esta misión, Señor, que podamos llegar a nuestros hogares, Padre Celestial, que podamos estar con nuestra familia, Señor, reunidos con nuestra familia en nuestros hogares, Padre, quita toda dolencia, quita todo dolor, quita todo malestar de mis compañeros y personas, Señor, para que podamos terminar esta misión, Padre amado, en nombre de Jesús te pedimos, amén y amén. Welcome back. It's been about an entire country since we last caught up. I'm currently in Panama, but a four day walk from the Costa Rica border. So a lot's happened since then. And for those of you who are new here, my name is Lucy Barnard. I am an Australian adventurer. I'm the first woman to have walked the length of South America and am in pursuit of becoming the first to walk the length of the Americas. Without a doubt, the most intriguing component or the one that the part that I get asked the most about is the Darien Gap. So the Darien is an essential part of, of this expedition that I have to cross to reach Central America from South America. The most popular hikeable distance between the Pan American Highway and the coast at the northern tip of Colombia is about 85 kilometers. The Darien National Park is UNICEF listed and is a World Heritage Area. There's a lot of scientific interest because there are undiscovered species and endangered and threatened species of animals and it's just a, a very ecologically interesting part of the world with a lot of biodiversity so it's an important area and so you can expect to see Border Patrol, refugees, scientists, people who are indigenous to the area who live there, and then people who are there for aid purposes to assist those who are in marginalised groups, whether it be because they're refugees or have poor access to medical assistance. There's illegal activity happening in both directions and it's not my area of expertise, so I'm not going to go on in depth about this but it does explain why Centrefront was so concerned about my security, um, why I had sought out guides to help me pass through securely um, and why there is so much interest in this area in the first place when it comes to uh, what's available on online. Certainly for me it was always a potential and it, it was important for me to really appreciate that maybe I wasn't going to be able to cross and I accepted that. It would have just been a real shame to have a gap in this expedition because then I wouldn't have truly completed the walk in its entirety the way I intended to set the world record. I made my way into Panama legally and then headed north through some of the most remarkable places I've ever, ever been. Um, I spent time with a indigenous group in Amila where I met some scientists doing really important studies into leatherback turtles, which is an endangered species, and the first tagging project ever. So it was really cool to be a part of that and helping them locate turtles in the middle of the night. I then returned to the border crossing where I had to talk with Border Patrol about continuing because they had some real reservations about my safety and security, of course. I met with uh, the Director General of Centrefront who is in charge of Border Control, who really understood what my ambition is and the commitment that I'd already made to reach Panama and decided to support me by providing me with an escort team to walk along the trail. And for them, it wasn't really use of their resources because they patrol this area anyhow and, and they were due to take that route and check out what's going on in that area. So we all um, headed back to a point that I had, had um, progressed to and recommenced the walk from that point. Um, and that was the last day of work for the people on that shift. They work in month swings. And so the next day I met the ho an entire new team and we made a plan over the course of what they thought might be three to five days, but ultimately ended up being seven. 
each morning they would start the day with a prayer and a briefing which became particularly important further on in the jungle where security risks are elevated. Um, just to remind us that even though we're having a really good time all hanging out together and hiking, that we need to start paying more attention and walk quietly and with care. And there were a few incidences where we came across people who needed to be searched, but certainly nothing really elevated to a point where I was concerned. There was one group of people who ran off to evade having their possessions searched and you know it's a, it's a jungle so they just went and hid and then we went past them no doubt and they would have been able to continue I have since met researchers who work in this region who um, have a really hard time understanding the humanitarian component of what goes on in this part of the world because they're formulating the, 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 the first documentation of why people commute through this region what their experiences are, and they spend a lot of time in the refugee camps where people are processed before moving towards Costa Rica. It's a complicated area, and I would recommend anyone that wants to visit to really do some research beforehand, but it is also a national park, and there are operators in this area, not necessarily where these hotspots are, but where you can go and experience a hike and get to know the culture, um, visit indigenous groups, and have a secure and safe journey. And I would completely recommend that because for me it was a really beautiful place to visit and I, am, I feel very privileged to have been there. Things that caught me by surprise on the journey were um, stopping in in villages and meeting local people who were really generous. One person wanted to ensure that I had enough energy to hike the, the, the Camino. Um, so they gave me a block of panela, which is a type of raw sugar. And one family of women kept feeding me this rice pineapple drink, which is delicious. Um, and Again, they just they wanted to hear my stories and spend some time with me. I have heard a lot of stories about money exchange, about how people pay $5,000, $500 to go through these trails securely. Um, in reality, from the people that I've spoken to, they paid 50. And when they pass through a village, they pay $5, which is, um, at first, to me, I found it really shocking. I thought, oh, that's really gross that they're being taken advantage of just to go through a, a, a community. But actually I came to learn that because of all of the rubbish that's located in the jungle now that's left behind by people who are just exhausted and unable and ill-equipped and inexperienced to be able to pack out what they carry in, um, the water and the rivers that are the life source of these villages are now completely contaminated so they have to import all of the water that they consume, which has added a, 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 has forced an increase to their cost of living. I also found out from guides who operate legally through a harm minimization initiative with the Pan Panamanian government that they charge from the route that I did, they charge $50 per person to guide them through safely. And that if they need a pack carried, they always charge them an additional $50 per pack, and if a child needs carrying, it's $100.
US. I think I was quite surprised by how organized that was and also how cheap in comparison to what I, the stories that I've heard. And then once these people that reach a community, they're processed. Now I went through a low traffic area. So to me, it looked organized and people were in really good spirits and really excited that they'd made it through. But I know that um, from people that I've spoken to, people who, are, who go through the mass area where there are 500 people arriving every day, it's a whole nother story it's, and it's just really difficult to manage and is still quite a nightmare because it's just too many people um, to manage well. But once they arrive to these areas, the um, communities have life, uh, what they call lanches, so wooden boats that carry them down the river to the Pan American Highway and from there they're able to board onto buses for $40 per person. They've been taken up to a place near where I am right now, close to the Costa Rican border and are then taken to the border crossing and are processed through special lines so that they're able to continue their journey up towards the United States. I haven't seen what happens from there on out, obviously, because I'm still here. Um, that is the journey for those people who arrive in that manner. I mean, for me, it was nice to be walking with Centrefront because it looked like I was there for an official purpose, which I was, but also really difficult to be there by choice when you're witnessing people leaving countries in conflict who are there out of desperation for a better life. I've certainly seen a lot of comments about economic refugees and um, people trying to get to the United States you know, in a, in a sinister manner to, to, to get rich and they've got heaps of money and da 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 da, da. I can tell you, I didn't see anyone just that you could describe that way on my journey at all. In fact, mostly people just want to live somewhere where they don't have to look over their shoulder or worry about being raided at night or arrested or um, killed. Uh, and they want to be somewhere with their family where they feel safe. So I feel, I feel really uneasy talking about all of this because it was such a complicated but joyful in some ways experience because it was such a privilege to be in a beautiful national park. It was hard to see all the rubbish that's left behind. It was difficult to get my head around all the payments that people make um, and then slowly coming to terms with the change in environment and why those payments exist in the first place but of course accepting that there are people who definitely are taking advantage, who are operating illegally. The consequences for those people is 15 years jail, so there must be a pretty big benefit for them to take that kind of risk. Sí, lo robaron ahorita todo. Sí, sí. Pues, así dos, así ¿Cuántos son? Tres. Son cuatro. ¿Lo robaron? Sí. ¿Qué? Sí. ¿Qué? Sí. ¿Todo? No, ya lo robaron. Okay. Están todos. Ah, eh, ¿Lastimaron a alguien? Eh, bueno, no, lastimaron chica, a alguien. Solamente lo lastimaron a alguien. What really amazed me when I got through was the care of the Panamanian culture. I was stopped frequently by people passing because for the route to get to the city, I was on a dirt road. I was stopped multiple times a day. A lady just um, came back. She was driving in the same direction as me and they turned around to check on me. Um, and I explained what I was doing and she said, ah, oh, we turned around because we thought you might be an immigrant who needs help. People were giving me um, Powerade and drinks for hydration and water and food 
and just checking that I was okay. People allowed me to camp behind their houses so that I was more secure. Um, and I just find generally that the culture here is a really curious one. People are genuinely interested to know what I'm doing, but they're also wanting to make sure that if I need help that I get it. Um, and I really hope that I can come back one day and give back to help clean up and protect the wilderness areas that have been so heavily impacted um, by the migration routes. It, I mean, I don't have the solution. I'm not an expert on any, by any means. Um, uh, but I mean, I'm certainly willing to put my hand up and contribute towards those solutions once they're nutted out. Moving on to the Panamanian Trail, I would highly recommend coming through Panama for a hike because for me it was a really beautiful place to visit and I, am, I feel very privileged to have been there. So I've been able to walk through really remote communities, <laughs> share really sweet coffee um, and follow small foot trails and see the most wonderful nuances of what's going on in these communities and then juxtapose with modern churches and being able to exchange biscuits that people cannot access in these regions for a cup of coffee and a chat I just think has been totally delightful. There's been a lot of wildlife. I have seen heaps of birds, heaps of snakes. I would highly recommend snake gators if you're coming through this region. Um, none of them have been aggressive that I have seen though. Um, there is one type that I'm glad I haven't seen because I hear that they are quite aggressive. Um, and it's been, in terms of logistics of trekking, really easy because I've just walked from one village to the next and bought food from communities where I feel they have enough supply to be able to share with someone foreign. Um, and I always ask too, just to make sure that it is appropriate. And I ask for permission as I, as I arrive into the um, villages to make sure that it's okay that I am where I am or do I need to reroute. And it's just been the views and the, and the type of environment have changed drastically. I'm definitely right on the edge of the wet season. And so it's getting more and more tricky to get the distances that I wanted to do every day. So I'm just going to have to start being more consistent about doing shorter distances because come two o'clock in the afternoon and it's pelting down and I don't want to live in a wet tent. <laughs> this is a whole new stress that I have to worry about the wet season. And now that I'm four days away from reaching the Costa Rican border, I can honestly say that I'm sad to be leaving in another country where I have just felt right at home and really felt the, the love and connection with people who are either indigenous, mainstream, Panamanian, or the, the, the expat community, because there's a significant I've had a significant interaction with all three groups and it has just been marvellous. I am looking forward to Costa Rica. I think that I've been told that the further north you go, the more friendly people get. I can't imagine how that's even possible. Um, I am looking forward to the diversity in food. I always love getting to new countries and learning how they prepare things differently. Um, but for now, I'm just really grateful that I have successfully completed the connection between South and Central America safely and I'm very grateful for all the support that I have received. Until next time, get out there!